Alright, looks like we got one person from the Facebook group here. Let me see if I can set up. Make sure it's set up right before I start talking. Yeah, looks like it's working. Let me see if the chat's working on YouTube. I should probably rename it. This is not the right name for it. Probably got to share people a link to. Transformers the last night review. Actually I should say more words. Just to spoil a little bit, but I do compare it a lot with Heaven's Gate. This is the Heaven's Gate toy commercial Beformers films. Find the there it is. Let's see if we can share the link. I just write notes so everyone's talking about this movie now that I'm mentioning it to everybody. Pretty much, I was dreading watching this film the whole week. I hate Transformers 3. I didn't watch Transformers 2, but I hated it. Heard it was really bad. Transformers 1 has a whole parents talking about Shia LaBeouf pleasuring himself, and it wasn't the film done by Lars von Trier called The Nymphomaniac. Transformers 4, he makes... A reference to snobby film critics, and I felt that was very dumb and low class, so I didn't watch that one. After watching Transformers The Last Night, I regret having dreading watch the film. This film, this Transformers film, this Bayformers film, this Michael Bay Transformers film, Transformers The Last Night, is actually very good. So good, so bad, it's so good. You know what I mean. It's about as convoluted as the film that came out. So, they should have went the Sharknado approach with this film in the advertising. Because nothing in the film really got me excited for the film. I didn't follow enough of the fourth film or watch through enough of it to figure out what people would like from the fourth film and the fifth film. Mark Wahlberg's in it. I didn't really like him in the fourth film. Then again, I didn't really watch through the whole film. They didn't really have a catch line in that. So, how about this tagline for 
Transformers The Last Night. It's not just some generic title. It'll be Transformers meets Magic meets Lord of the Rings meets Harry Potter. Because that's basically what happens in the movie. And it's very distracting. And it's freaking awesome. In the beginning of the film, you watch this troll or goblin or something. And it has to do with King Arthur, but whatever. I'm I'm just assuming it's a troll or goblin or something. With this prosthetic nose bigger than mine, or CGI nose, I don't know, but it's huge and ginormous, and it's very distracting. And I'm like, this is a Transformers film? What am I watching? I, I pro Probably a lot of people left in left in the first 10 minutes because they didn't know it was a Transformers film when they were watching it. Like, it was not clear. Until, of course, the dragon Transformer shows up. And I'll get to that later. It's very distracting how much money they spent on the opening. Just on that human's face, like... They probably spent so much on makeup on just that one guy, and it was very distracting. Because, like, nobody cares about a Lord of the Rings Transformers. It has nothing to do with Transformers, or Bayformers, or Michael Bayformers, or whatever you want to call it. No one wants to watch that kind of film when they came to the theater. Then, for some odd reason, Buster from Arrested Development in this movie is in NASA. And I'll get to that later. Then for some odd reason, kids who can't act are in like this Boys in the Hood ripoff scenario, in a Stand By Me scenario, from this empty, destroyed field that's probably a reference to The Dark Knight Rises or something. I mean, I'll give a credit for this. They do something with franchises or films that don't normally do that kind of stuff in the movies. Boys in the Hood ripoff, Stand By Me ripoff. 90s movie when it's like a disaster movie inspiration if you can call it that that's what it would have to be for that to happen and that totally won't make mo movies your money then again disaster movie doesn't make cr critics ever you get my point at least it's different so so far very impressive no Shia no Mark Wahlberg no military something original as bad ha the writing is at least it's not lazy oh hi Mark Okay, so he's in the film. And then there's something about Transformers or Autobots or Cubans or John Turturro. I don't know. There's like this thing. I don't watch the first movie. I'll get back to that. As I mentioned, I don't watch the fourth movie. So I didn't know anything that was going on. And I don't think it mattered because I watched the whole movie of the fifth one. And I don't think that that had to matter with anything. Like, what? I get, yeah, I get that in a moment. There's not a lot of continuity in this movie. So there's no military, no Mark, no Shia, and then Mark shows up. Okay. So he's in the film. Something about Transformers or Autobots and not being the good guys anymore or the government's not trusting them or it's like the apocalypse or something. But it's very vague. The Wikipedia, I think, was confusing too. Like, I don't think they understood what was going on when I was watching the film and I don't understand the film when I was watching the film. So there's a lot of people who don't understand what's going on in this film exactly. John Turturro shows up with his anti-hero character again, and he's telling everybody not to mess with the Jesus. If you get that reference, comment below. Reference that itself is a reference to two things. So we have a samurai robot in the junkyard for some odd reason. I skipped ahead, but I don't really care. This film is really boring. <laughs> Let me just get through the parts. I'm going to go to the Wikipedia. It's not going to help. Let me show you the Wikipedia on my uh, iPad. It's like, it's a very incoherent mess in itself, and it's not going to help you understand the full. Probably going to confuse you on a film that's confusing. Even.
Transformers The Last Night is a 2017 American sci-fi action film based on the toy line of the same name created by Hasbro. I just love how they describe that in the first sentence of Wikipedia. Very cool. It's a sequel to 2014's Transformers Age of Extinction. The first three films, the continuity was not that important. Concerning that Megatron and Optimus always die in the beginning or whatever, and so everything's like the same. Josh, Josh Duhamel, I don't even remember what was being in the film, because I, I just didn't care. It's the worst revealed film of the series, which tells you a lot. Okay. Transformers Reaction Force, blah, blah, blah. War Torn Chicago. Again, a reference to The Dark Knight Rises, because that's where the film took place. Oh, no, that was The Dark Knight. There's, there's a T Transformers Reaction Force Walker. Like, it's like sort of like a Star Wars Chicken Walker inspiration. I don't know if this is the right order. It doesn't really matter. I'll go back to my notes. The junkyard happened. Okay, so that happens before that. Alright. So... I think what happens is Mark Wahlberg destroys all the Transformers with explosions, and it looks coherent. Well, I'm pretty sure that scene wasn't that in the game of the film. It's more, probably that, that scene was probably more Bumblebee saving the day, and you know it's like Mega, Mega Man Buster blowing that stuff up. So yeah, of course he does the spinny thingy, and he probably does in every Transformers Payformers film. It happens, okay. So next, Cybertron's been approaching Earth. Which, let's not talk about that till later. Because you figure it'd be a big deal. Cybertron, Unicron, etc. Quintessa shows up. Mind controls Optimus Prime into destroying Earth and fulfilling this mission. That looks better than the opening scene with the dwarf or elf or whatever he was in the beginning. And later on, 20 minutes into the film... Where they have the stupid... I'm trying to remember now. That's in the notes. That only happens on my Facebook. Oh, so... I probably was dozing off and didn't understand what was going on, but it looked like there were Transformers who were on Cybertron that were using a Sistine Chapel on Cybertron or Unicron and were able to read English or Old English because they were nice or something. I don't think that was what actually happened, but it seemed like it if I, since I was paying attention. I was just, they were on Earth and they were knights to like it's like old Autobot technology. I think it was Autobot. Or it was definitely Transformer, but I don't know if it was necessarily Autobot. So in any case, this is going on. The Knights on Earth. The King King Arthur's Knights of the Round are Transformers. And it sounds like it would be a good comic book or pop culture like Flash. TV show storyline, a League of Legends of Tomorrow storyline, but this is Michael Bay. This is Michael Bay Transformers storyline, so of course it's not that good. He doesn't care. He doesn't do that kind of stuff. Not to mention, I think Akiva Goldsman was involved in this, and I think he did Batman and Robin also, which really is going to help his career. Because I think there were certain good parts of Batman's and Robin, and I. After this film, I'm thinking he didn't have any part of any of that. I could be wrong. Everybody, everybody in this film is terrible, so why not?
So anyway, Quintessa, this female... I don't even know if she's an Autobot or if she's a... She's a Cybertron... She's associated with the Cybertronian Knights. Which I think they're from Earth, or I think they're from Cybertron. They're from somewhere. I don't know where they're from. But anyway, she's there. She mind controls Optimus Prime. Even though he's not a knight, even though she has all these powerful people, I don't know why Optimus is so popular other than he hasn't destroyed a storyline so far. So anyway, she mind controls Optimus Prime. Into fighting. Or supposedly the but they don't really do it. Anyway. She wants a staff from Merlin. I can't even say this properly. This is ridiculous. I this is, She wants the staff of Merlin to bring the Cybertron. Give it to her by Optimus Prime who's getting mind controlled by Quintessa, which is her. My brain hurts. This this is complicated. This is this is not supposed to be Inception, Mac Bay. This is this is Transformers. It should be simple. Megatron, Optimus, fight each other. That's it. Soldiers, military finish. Girls who look hot. There's some certain things that are in the Transformers film that shouldn't be in this film. And there, though that's not even a critically acclaimed thing. It's a box office thing, and that's not even in this film. This is ridiculously bad. I, I can't understand what's going on. This Wikipedia is hurting my brain. Just to follow... I don't, look at this. I have, I have two sets of notes just to follow this damn film. It's complicated. Yeah, break. I'm gonna send people like the link to the page. Probably somebody, somebody in my Facebook group can help me out with explaining what the story is about. Here's the link. Hopefully I can remember everything that went on in this film. Between my brain, which is probably mush now. And two Apple devices. I really hoped I short, I shorted, uh, I sold short on Paramount stock. Cause like, since they got rid of Iron Man, this is pretty much their only franchise. Their big budget franchise. And it's way under the expectations of stockholders and stuff. Although I'm not even sure if the expectations were that high considering that they were only estimating like a 600 to 700 million dollar revenue stream from this film. In the franchise, which is very low considering that they all do like 800 to 1 billion on these films. I remembered earlier uh, around the time of the economic recession of like 2008 to 9, I was thinking, oh, no, it was like 2011 to me. I was thinking, okay, so Shrek was big and that was doing very well. Like the second film made like 900 million. The third and the fourth not so much, but like it still went high. It was under expectations. I was hoping the same for Kung Fu Panda based on what Shrek did, but it didn't happen. Which is what you're using to you do forecasting with unknown variables with stuff that isn't necessarily directly related. So this is a film, this is a vlog about Transformers last night, and I'm using all these technical terms for people who probably don't want to watch the film in the first place. But in any case, it's good to know. The stock, anyway.
This foam has fried my brain. Alright, let's back to the notes. I need two of to figure out what exactly it was or how exactly this foam. Because it's not very consistent and there's no real coherent plot to it. So after that, Megatron basically robs a bank. It could have been more comical, it could have been more serious, but it was very bland how it did it. He just shoots a safe and then a whole bunch of money comes out. And then I assume that's what he does to like hire a whole bunch of like old Decepticons who got captured by the United States or world governments at the time. Because apparently this is like some sort of apocalyptic world, which is why I'm assuming it's called Age of Extinction in the fourth film, although I'm not sure because I didn't watch the whole thing. Yeah, you choose a whole bunch of Decepticons, that don't matter. Um, so, there's, they say that he's in Cuba before, where there's an asylum for, like, Autobots and Decepticons, because like, other world governments are after them. But I don't see how happening, considering that they're all super powerful in the first four films, or at least for three films. Although, in this, this fourth, this fifth film, they are very weak, even, not Sam Wolf, he, Corey Yeager, whatever his name is, can like blow up like a ton of them like in one shot. Although he's a well equipped with explosives, which is pretty cool. Although this is a really terrible film to be in. South Dakota is also a sanctuary to a whole bunch of Transformers. And so Cuba and South Dakota, the number one sanctuaries for Transformers in this universe, in this film. I don't know what's the reasoning behind that. Is there a pop culture reason why that's happening? I don't know. Cuba, I can sort of understand. Cuba is recently open to United States companies. So there's like a James Bondish. let's go to a new exotic location that just open up, do that, and something new. South Dakota, I'm guessing budgetary reasons as well, opposed to exotic locations reasons. I don't even know if they actually shot in South Dakota. And I'm not going to look that up, because that's very... Who cares? But anyway, they went to South Dakota. So he's with a whole bunch of Autobots. They fight. It's cool because of all the explosions that Corey Yeager, Mark Wahlberg does. I will admit that. That's probably the only highlight of the film. It's coherent. I could see what's going on. It didn't make anyone look invincible. Corey Yeager and Mark Warburg look lucky. They look like an action hero, sort of. That looked like it made sense for, compared to the rest of the film that doesn't make any sense. I don't even care that the Decepticons don't have any characters because, like, these names don't mean anything anyway. Like, they're just, like, the disposable ones. They're not Megatron, etc. So all that made sense to me. Something made sense in this movie. So anyway, they meet a Cogman, a Headmaster, and Anthony Hopkins. And they... This is the worst name for an Illuminati group in any pop culture thing ever. Even though I don't even know if I can call this pop culture. Because this is the least watched, least critically acclaimed film of the Transformers live action Bayformers Michael Bay series. Which is sad because these, these films are highly watched. And it's also sad because these films are also very lowly graded. So anyway, the name of this group that is very important to the plot of the film and save the world is a very elite group of people. Harriet Tubman, Albert Einstein, Sam Woodwicky, possibly Corey Yeager, or, which I'll get into in a moment, I don't care if I spoil this because this plot, who cares about the plot, it's Transformers. And the woman who got this European woman in the, earlier in the film. A couple minutes earlier in the film. They got them all together to form the Witwicken Order. Named after, I'm assuming, Sam Witwicky. Sam Witwicky. Spite Witwicky. Whatever his name is. That's the worst name I've ever heard of. 
This is all the worst. The worst. Illuminati. You're so, searching Harriet Tubman with Illuminati? That is the worst. How? Whatever. You know what I mean. So anyway, that's the Illuminati. And they need them to save the world. Okay. I don't even know what this has to do with the Cybertronian Knights. Because, like... They're from Cybertron. What does that have to do with Earth? Because they have Knights on Earth that are also Transformers. Let's not think about too hard about that. Let's not give them too much credit and that think that they had storylines that connect A to B. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. This isn't even on the level of normal Transformers films bad. This is just really bad in general. This is how someone in my Facebook said Birdemic bad. And very laughable. Enjoyably bad, but laughable. They were, this is a very bare bones production. I'll get more into it later. Also, this is a plot. Back, I'll get back to it later. I should probably get back, I'll get back to it later because, like, I lost my opportunity to say it, and if I say it now, it'll be very out of place. I'll be more in place later when I'll say how out of place it was prior. So most of the kids of the film get dropped later in the film. They seem like they're important. They're from Chicago. The Battle of Chicago. So you forget they'd be major main characters. No, they're dropped. You can't afford these films, these characters that have no names, have no fame. Probably make it big at Stranger Things, if anything else, or commercials. Yet, they don't put them in the film again. The Battle of Chicago kids. And that sums up most of the film. It seems like Super Mario Bros. the movie where everybody hates the film. And I would even say Michael Bay didn't want to get involved in this film. Because he knew it hurt his re reputation with building dollar franchises. Because this film didn't do that well. And I think he knew it was going to do that well either because the film was in bad... Two things. The film was in bad circumstances. Or the fact that the franchise and the excitement of the franchise was dying down. Both of which definitely were factors here. As the backside of this is... Gone worse. The dragon in the beginning of the film, you don't really see in the film. The kids in the beginning of the film don't really last long in the film. Mark Wahlberg is barely in the film in the first half, so he's not main character, except we see him for the second half. And he gets the King Arthur sword for some odd reason. Even though the ladies, the lineage of the Wookiees. But he is the knight. Okay. Let's let's pretend that makes sense. Let's Okay. I give up. Sure. Tyrese Gibson claims he didn't want to do the film because of scheduling conflicts with the Fast and Furious 8, Fate of the Furious. I think that's bullshit. He didn't want to be in this film because he knew it was gonna be trash. He pro I don't even know if he likes the toys or whatever, but this film was definitely terrible. He probably, I'm assuming he's, he's the stupidest or smartest person in the world, but let's say. He knew this film was Transformers meets Magic. I wouldn't want to do this film either if I were him. I would rather do Fate and the Furious, even though that wasn't even that good film either. At least he got to do acting and was in something. No one in this film does any acting or is even in the film for that long enough for anyone to care. Not to mention the, who would want to in a film about magical Transformers. Michael Bay probably wants to leave the series for the exact same reason, knowing what I just said. This film would tarnish his credibility being in Batman and Robin status, having magical Transformers. The fact that the fa franchise of Transformers has outstayed its welcome. That it's not doing as many films as the Marvel films are doing. Etc. There's so many reasons... This French is tarnished now that there's no reason why he should stay. The Transformers films take a while to make, which is very weird considering that the Marvel films have like several a year for a few years now. Yet the Transformers films don't exactly have a big script or have an audience who cares about 
little nuances like that. So why do they take so much time to make that? Like, that's kind of the competence that you don't want in that kind of franchise. And I see where you want to get away. Buster from Arrested Development doesn't show up in the rest of the film. And getting back to what I was saying before, Contessa, Quintessa, she's barely in the film. Her thing is that she's a Transformer sorceress. That's what... Sorcery and Transformers. It, it never gets any better how many times I say it, but that's basically what the film's about. So she mind controls Optimus, opposed to, like, you know, doing what Sci-Fi 101 would tell you and, like, reprogram him or something? Or, like, techno reprogram him? At least her scene is looks like they're on a techno planet or something, like Cybertron or Unicron or whatever it is. Like, the scene where they're in the, in the castle with the Transformer Knights from Earth and not from Cybertron. And the scene with the dwarf or whatever his name is, who we don't see it later, is very confusing. I also wonder why is this movie so long? Like, nothing happens in this movie for it to be this long. Michael Bay also probably didn't have a lot of fun doing this film. There are no soldiers, not a lot of action, not a lot of butt shots of women, not a lot of kind of things that would be in a normal Bay Informers film. The characters aren't even that offensively dumb, and as much as they don't like it, at least there's like a certain... You know, that's the kind of audience your film is for. It's better to have a film audience for dumb people than for no one at all. That's only for marketing and for direction and for just your general enjoyment of the film. Like, people only don't make films that they don't want to see anyone make or see. Unless they're like crafted well, which this obviously isn't. Although he can say, at least I got the film made, which is sort of true. Peter Travers gave this a 0 out of 4, or 5 stars, I forget what his rating, rating is. This is very interesting. He gave Sucker Punch a caca. He's a very, he's been in Channel 7 a lot, and he's got like the logo with a chainsaw cutting through like critics and stuff, and that's why my brother hated him, even like some nostalgia critic. So anyway, he gave the he sucker punch a caca, and I don't see why he didn't give Transformers The Last Night a caca. Because, like, this was a really caca film. Not everything in it makes sense. It seems like they lost... Everybody left the film as many times as possible. I didn't even look up if Michael Big stayed on for the whole film, because it seemed like he didn't do a lot of the directing in this film compared to the previous films. Like, Sucker Punch... They had a whole hype about the dance scene and all oh, this is... It seemed like a bit SJW-ish. I don't like to say that term, but like... I don't want to say feminist. I mean, I, I would always say it's not very feminist, but like... They are a little bit oversensitive to the Sucker Punch film, in my opinion. Because a lot of it... It was like a video game. Or I, I don't know if the dance was that important, but like... Obviously it was supposed to be important to the film that like... It wasn't that sexy, it was sort of PG-13, and, but the film looked really cool. Um, Batman vs. Superman, the new cut, looks very impressive, and it looks like you wonder how much Warner Brother producers completely ruined his own films. This, I have no idea. It could have been Michael Bay screwing up the film, it could have been producers telling him to do a certain stuff, a certain way, and then... Once they said Magic Transformers, everybody left. Nobody seemed to want to stay for this film. Everybody seems it very short. Even the voice actors didn't seem like they want to stay that long. Megatron and Optimus aren't in this film a lot either. And, you know, even for... I don't even know if Michael Bay wants Optimus and Megatron to be in most of his films. They've been in there for a while, and taking them away has not been a good decision in this film. This is a very confusing film. This, as I said in the title, is the Heaven's Gate of terrible, terrible, of the worst of already pretty bad films. This is incoherent garbage. People said this with Cloud Atlas, people said this with like the producer's cut of Heaven's Gate, which is actually, the director's cut of Heaven's Gate is actually an excellent film. So you wonder... 
there have been all, all this hype about films that sh- the, the shared universes, the mummy, the criticism of DC and Amazing Spider-Man, Fantastic Four. Although I see the Marvel films not always being of the greatest quality ever, considering that there's like if you like all the Marvel films, I consider you a teenager because there's no not no way that's possible. You might watch them, but I wouldn't say that you like them all or consider them all masterpieces. Or maybe you have a taste in more popular films opposed to masterpieces like The Godfather and stuff. Anyway, this actually probably is underhyped by the media, although they've already said that this film is pretty terrible and has ruined not only the Transformers franchise, but what I think has ruined toy franchises forever. Like, I don't know if Lionsgate and Power Rangers knew, but if they had made... If Power Rangers that came out before... No, sorry, after the last night it came out, they would have been ter- even worse in the box office, just because of how terrible the last night ended up being. Because this is one of those films that were actually as bad as they say in the terms of history, and historically, I don't know how this is going to affect future films of toy franchises, of Transformers, of giant robots, of everything. And that's no exaggeration. I think that's really what this film is going to do. That's a very sad fact. Uh, I don't know if anyone has any questions. I'm going to do another Q&A after this, but that's where I really see this film going in terms of history and in terms of how bad it was. I'm sorry to say. Although I had a very good time watching this film. I sort of don't want to watch them in the theater and give them my money because I was very entertained by how bad it was, but... I mean, it was pretty funny. <laughs> it was really bad. No. Some people like watching bad films. I don't consider myself one of them, but like... This was enjoyably bad. At least it was thoroughly bad. Not like a lot of these so-so bad films. Like, they... they it was a disaster. I miss you, Michael. Man, come back soon. Please don't leave.